simple and good and works every time. Now, put your bolt back in, bring it back, and slide it right in. Yeah, like so. Now, let's talk about something else here if I can. There's a couple different styles. They've changed styles over the years. Uh, this is the old style uh, stock retaining system. Has a screw in the uh, pistol grip here. The new ones, the new models have uh, the uh, the bolt actually goes on the end of the uh, action tube here, like these little Japanese guns we were just looking at. To remove the stocks on those, you pull your, your magazine tube out, your inner magazine tube out. And this is the old early style. They made some with a loop on them. Then they went to a plastic end out here. This is just the early style. Uh, one thing, the, uh, these, these have a bit of a weakness in them. These old early magazine tubes, they have a tendency, if I can get this stock off, that was on our tie. Um, they have a tendency to break off in the receiver, the old early magazine tubes. And uh, I get bunches of them in every year to have that replaced. Now this one's good, uh, but they, they break off. The threads make them a little weak up here where they go in the receiver, and um, they'll break off. Now the new tubes that they make uh, from the newer models, I'll get this up down under my bench here, see if I've got one. I bet I do, yeah. yeah I do here. Uh, I replace a lot of them. Here's a newer style tube. This tube is bigger in, in diameter. Uh, when these break off, you can go one of two ways. A lot of guys want to keep their old guns looking all factory original, and they're not shooting them that much, so they're not too worried about, you know, how how well it's how long it's going to last. And I do bunches of these every year. What we do when the tubes break off up in here, we take an easy out and we get the broken off piece of tube out, and uh, this one's screwing right out, but. Uh, we'll get that broken piece of uh, tube out of there and uh, then we'll take and re run a die down over this part of the broken tube and put some new threads on it and screw it back up in the receiver and then when you do that of course it moves your loading gate area here this notch for loading it'll move it forward too so then we take a end cutter and we cut it out about a oh, quarter inch back behind it and then it elongates this a little bit which doesn't hurt anything and then we can put your gun back together and it'll still look all original and authentic now, if you really want to go the other way, we have all the tooling that it takes to uh, replace this tube completely. And we uh, have to tap out your receiver. Uh, we have to bore out the stock. And then we put the, uh, the large nut on that goes on the back of the uh, tube here, and that holds your stock on. It takes away kind of the original look of it, but it's, you know, this is the best way to go. But being as these things are more collector things than anything now, most cases, I recommend just modifying this tube that uh, we take out of the gun, uh, re-threading it, putting it back in. It's cheaper, and it, it'll last a long time, and makes the gun look all original. So that's uh, the way these work. Now, this gun here has a, uh, and I haven't taken it out, but there's a like a flat spring down inside the stock here. And what that spring does, it puts some tension on this magazine tube as you pull it out, and uh, it actually will stop it. There's a couple little notches in now, of course, you can pull it on out past it, but that's just one of the uh, systems they've got for holding uh, the uh, magazine tube. And the idea is when you bring it back, straight back, and, and it kind of drops in the notches and stops, that means that you're clear to go ahead and load. You can load your gun from that way. Now, they make a different style. One I broke apart here just the other day. <clears throat> this one has the, uh, the spring that actually mounts on the uh, uh, tube itself. And it has a, it's the same principle. Uh, but uh, the, uh, this, these, this spring right here will grip this magazine tube when it comes out. Puts a little tension on it. There's a couple of notches here. And when it gets to these notches, it stops. So these, these are a little trickier to get off there. Now, this piece actually, to, to, to remove it, you've got to take your, uh, when you take the screw out of your stock, this, is, this piece is going to be kind of still holding your stock and it won't let it come off. So you've got to kind of get something in there and kind of rotate this around because it, it's got... A notch in the tube here and it's got these little detents in the uh, retainer here and what you got to do is just kind of rotate that thing around about 90 degrees and what that does that clears gets uh, the uh, little tabs out of the notch of the uh, tube so you can pull it off and so these are a little harder to get off sometimes but these systems all work and they're okay they work well the new ones of course have a uh, Oh, the magazine tube. Uh, see if I've got one of those under my bed here. I've got a bit of everything down here. I, I throw all my old used tubes down here. I don't see it. Yeah, here's a new style. Here's a new style tube. They got the plastic out on here. 
Now these, of course, when these go into the gun, in the end of that nut we're talking about, there's a, a slot and these go in and you got these two little pins, the pins sticking out here and you rotate around that pin locks them in. This is a better system. This is a new improved system, works better, but these work and, uh, you know, they're all there. But we do a lot of modifying on these things every year, changing over to the new style tube. And there again, mostly I, I end up putting back in the uh, old tube and uh, just using it that way because it makes the gun look original and authentic. Uh, this little short gun now, here's a this, this slide on this long rifle over here. I try not to get things mixed up too much. This little short gun here, they have a, there's some differences in them. They're just set up, they shoot shorts only. Now, here's what you, that, that one's, they, they stick in there sometimes a little bit. You may have to kind of shock it a little bit with a rawhide mount to break it loose. There. Now, here's some differences in the short model. The uh, cartridge guide is shorter, a little squattier. Of course, things are different in the receiver here. There again, uh, always be careful of your little cartridge stop here because in most cases, they'll just drop right out. That one's sticking in a little more. Sometimes I have to actually get some pliers in there and pull them out. But something to be watching for when you take your gun apart, don't lose that part. It's not an expensive part, but it's an inconvenience when you lose it. So the short model has a little shorter uh, cartridge guide. Now here's another difference on the shorts. And uh, we've got this long rifle to compare with here. Let's just pull this out. Try not to get things mixed up. Here's my long rifle. Now, here's my short. See the difference in the bolt? The short being that uh, the round has less uh, energy to it. Uh, when you fire it, uh, in order to make that gun work, they've had to lighten up the bolt, the breech bolt on the short models. So as you can see, they have milled out you know, areas of it to uh, eliminate uh, some of the weight and you can really feel the difference when you pick one up too. And that's what makes a short model work is uh, the, uh, the lighter bolt has to, has to be there to work. And the same thing on these, really not much difference between the two of them. Those are just the differences that are there. Uh, they assemble up the same way to uh, put them together. Of course you have to, and this one's sticking on me for some reason there. You gotta to re put this back in, you have to pull it back a little bit and then just slide it back in. Great little gun, simple. Uh, that's what makes them good. Uh, there's not much to ever really go wrong with them. They just seem to shoot like for forever and ever. And um, I can't think of anything else. Those are kind of some of the basics on the 22 Auto. Uh, see, this, this one will have the old style system in it too. Uh, I don't have a new style one in front of me. They, the new ones make it to where this adjustment ring is a little easier to turn without removing stocks and or forms and all. This one here is pretty tight too. Uh, if you can't get it adjusted, like I say, you remove your forearm and just use those little pointers that I showed you. Um, you kind of adjust your ring and then put uh, your uh, lock back in place and uh, that'll work out well. But same thing on these, just important that you, uh, there again, when you go to removing stocks, don't grab, you know, make sure. A lot of guys make the mistake of not pulling the bolt back a little bit when you go to take that barrel off. Of course, when you don't do that, uh, your extractor is locked into this uh, slot in the barrel here. Your extractor is locked in there, so it's not going to let that barrel turn. So that's why a lot of those stocks get broken. A lot of guys just think that, you know, you can just twist it off once you push your lock out of the way. That doesn't work. You have to bring this bolt back a half inch or so. Then that barrel will turn right off. And there again, don't grab it by the stock and twist it off because you're going to need me if you do that. Always grab by the receiver. And if it's really tight, put this receiver in a padded vise or the barrel in a padded vise and then... Just don't grab that stock, work on that. It'll save you a lot of heartache and a lot of money because this repair right here is gonna be very expensive. I'm gonna have to refinish this complete stock. It needs it anyway, it's got a bad finish. And I'm gonna have to refinish the forearm to match this grade three. So it's gonna be a lot of money spent on that gun right there because of that. That's a classic. If I see one of them, I swear I see a hundred of them a year come in like that. Quite often, there'll just be a big crack in them uh, or the chip doesn't come out all the way, but you can spot them every time. And when they do chip, it's always on the left side from where they twist them trying to remove them so that's a few pointers on excuse me on 22 auto <clears throat> uh, simple gun well made been around for years started making this thing in 1914 they called them a top loader at that time they had a little slot up in the top of the receiver they had no engraving on them and uh, they were different shaped of stocks and all quite unique there's a few of them out there they were top loaders you load them right through the top then they made all those changes there again they made this gun uh, in Belgium right up to 74, and at that time they went to the Japanese gun. Still manufactured to this day. 
because they're just a tried and proven design or in demand great little backpacking gun you can break it down put it in your backpack carry it with you and uh, uh, simple and reliable uh, when you get a hold of one that's been abused and used hard over the years they're easily rebuilt and reblued and refinished to look new again and um, they can be put right back into like new factory condition so anyway that's the 22 auto and a few pointers on that a few things to be looking for and um, uh, some things you can do to make life a little easier on yourself if you want to get into one of these and uh, uh, we'll carry on with a few other different Browning rifles and uh, uh, give you a few pointers on some of the others that Browning's